Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. And today is our midweek miracle service. Midweek miracle services. We air services two times a week. Once on the Sabbath and then again and during the midweek. The midweek will be any time during the week. Um, Monday through Friday, actually. And then Sabbath is on Saturday for us in our ministry. Our ministry that we use to broadcast or these ministries is called Hand of God Live. That's the umbrella of all the ministries. And underneath those ministries, one that is known by our ministry is the Team Jesus um, USA, which is our outreach ministry. And our Team Jesus USA outreach ministry, you can reach our ministry by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com or simply 614-847-2057. And we'll do our very best to get back in contact with you and answer any questions you might have concerning the ministry. Um, if you ever need us, feel free to call us. Um, today we'll be speaking on the subject. How you doing? Good. Who are you looking for? Uh, we just were born here. We just... Okay, me too. <laughs> What's your name? Sean Scott. Scott. Scott Mahan and Carter is our family. Okay. Carter. Yeah. <laughs> your name Carter. Uh, no, it would be uh, Reverend James Carter, Sarah Carter, Angela Carter, um, Aetha, Gaetha. Okay. No, we can't to the woods. It's jam woods. Okay. Woods. All right. <laughs> As you see, I'm live. <laughs> As you can see, I'm live, and also that's the thing about being live. When you're live, anything can happen at any time. Want, want, to, bring, want to bring them on as guests. I usually don't read responses, but anyway, let me get back to what I was talking about. Today, once again, like I said, it's our midweek miracle service at a car stop. Ever since I've been doing, I usually don't do uh, our services outside, but the weather's been so nice, I've been taking advantage of it. So when I go to Florida, I'll be doing a lot of services outside because it's so big and it's so great. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. If you want to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call, call us at 614-847-2057. 614-723-9770 if you ever want to get in contact with us by way of internet at www.teamjesususa.com we'll be talking today on a subject concerning being brand new <clears throat> being brand new a very short word that the Lord has given me to share with you guys and family and friends on being brand new and that's something that we can all sometimes take a breath and exhale and think about brand new if you ever been to a car this not even on my text, but if you ever got into a car and smelled new car smell, you know, a brand new car. Some people's never experienced that. Brand new new car, brand new house. Um, ain't nothing like brand new. So before we start, we'll begin with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you for waking us up and allowing us to see this day, Father God. Allowing us to be in the land of the living. It wasn't promised to us, but you gave it to us, Father God. We thank you and praise you. For everything you've done, everything you're doing, everything that you're soon, that is soon to be revealed that you would do. We find no fault in serving you, Father God. I just ask and pray that you continually and always teach us your ways, Father God. There are so many things going on on this earth today, Father God, that would have us try and do uh, and follow after the agendas and, uh, and all the things that men would have us do, Father God. But there are some ways that you have, Father God. And we know according to your word that your ways are not our ways and our ways are not your ways, Father God. Have your will and your way. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Be magnified and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, we'll be speaking real short on the word that God gave me concerning being new or being brand new. And as I go out and I do evangelistic work throughout wherever God sent me, I would love to say the world, but mainly um, in the Americas and a little bit in the Bahamas and all the places I've been able to go. One thing I've experienced with people that has been through some kind of situations or circumstances because of the process of life is that they would love to be made brand new. They would love to sometimes just start over, get a fresh start and be made brand new. And honestly and earnestly, even without being having an understanding of a believer and a Christian, because I didn't always walk with God the way I do now, but without that understanding, I know for a fact that only Jesus Christ can offer you an opportunity to be made brand new nothing else I mean you can get they can give you a new heart and another part of your body can go out um, as far as your physical body 
Um, you could lose all your money and get more money, and it's still not new money. Um, you can get your credit repaired, and it's still not the same. But Jesus Christ, when he does something that's new, it is new. He gives you opportunity to be what he intended for you to be. And the reason why he has the ability to do that, because he is the alpha, and he is the omega, he is the beginning, he is the end. So that's why Jesus Christ has the ability to make you new, regardless of what you've experienced or, or, or matter regardless of what you've been through in your lifetime. Um, some people think that they're too far gone to receive God's grace and mercy. No, you know, I've done too much, I've experienced too much, um, done too many drugs, drunk too much alcohol, and been a whoremonger, been a fornicator, been lesbian, being gay, been homosexual, whatever. Some people think they're too far gone. But let me help you understand this if you're watching that. We are never too far that the hands of Almighty God cannot reach us. Never. Never. It's impossible for us to even conceive that mindset. Why? Because you're alive. The very fact that you're alive, a living human being, you're living. The, the, he breathed the, 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 into the nostrils of Adam and made him a living soul. And as long as you are a living soul and not a dead soul, there's an opportunity for you to be made new. We'll be coming out of 2 Corinthians, a very familiar passage of scripture, um, 517. We're going to read that scripture and I'm going to exhort off of it a little bit and we're going to get out of here. But another example God gave me to share with you is the fact that, you know how it is when we was younger, um, guys, fellas, whoever, and um, say you got to that age when you start looking at girls different and guys different, and say you and your group of your fellas and your friends, and a guy sees a girl and he, 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 he thinks she's cute, and they start talking, whatever, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the interest you have in hanging with the fellas ain't the same no more. Your dudes be like, hey man, we want to shoot ball after school, you want to come? He's like, nah man, I'm going to go I'm gonna go hang out with, uh, I just used the name Bonnie, for example, that's my wife. <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with Bonnie. Man, what's up, man? You, you, you always shoot ball with us. Man, you're getting brand new on us. You know, that's how it is when, when, when you have a, a love interest or a like interest or something that you have um, that's greater than the things you used to do before. And a lot of guys and girls have experienced this. I'm going to say guy to girl and girl to guy. I'm not dealing with any other stuff. You can got to go to somebody else and hear that. But I'm saying, I'm talking like if, if I had found favor and all of a sudden... All my interests have changed from hanging with the fellas to all of a sudden change and I want to have to develop a relationship with my female friend, Bonnie. Then it's not so much that those things were so horrible that I did with the fellas. It's just that I found something new. I found something that I want to, 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 to experience, something that's drawing my attention, my heart, my time, my energy towards. And that's the example God gave me to share with you concerning being made new. Jesus Christ not only delivers us from the past we had, but he gives you something in place of that. So often in evangelism, you know, I deal with people in the field, and they, they often say, well, I can't stop this, and I can't stop that, and I can't stop the other. And I say, look here, this is what you need to do. I'm not telling you to stop anything. I'm telling you to change. God's going to replace you with those bad habits with godly habits. He's going to change you from that mindset of thinking I need this to showing you what you really need. In other words, he's not going to take you and empty you out and leave you empty. He's going to clean you up and give you something that you that you were supposed to have before the fall of man. That Adam and Eve had the opportunity to experience for a while before they got evicted. But this is what being brand new is all about. Let's get into the word of God. Let me go, like I said, 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 5, 17. And the reason is why it's therefore if any man be in Christ, so I want to stop right there already. If any man be in Christ, so right there, you must um, confess, repent, and believe. We're confessing that we are sinners. When you come to Jesus Christ, you're willing to confess, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. There's nothing in and of myself that I can do to obtain the things that God has for me. So if there's a, if there's a way that, that I must use to get to Him, first I must be willing to co confess that I'm a sinner. And why am I a sinner? If for no other reason I was born in t t to sin and shaped in, in, in iniquity. So we, we try and figure out why we sinners. I know people who don't understand the oracles of God will, excuse me, will try and figure out, well, I pay my taxes, you know, I pay my bills, I don't cheat on uh, my wife or my husband, um, I do this, that, and that. They try and figure out ways that they're good. None of us are good. Our righteousness is our filthy rags. Our faithfulness, there's no faithfulness that we can offer to God as for uh, 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 atonement for the sins that we was born into. 
We, you were, you're born in sin, so there's nothing you can do. So we confess we're sinners. So therefore, if any man be in Christ, the way we be in Christ is that we confess we're sinners. We're willing to repent and turn from the ways of the world and turn to God, the ways of the word. And then once we do that, then we believe. We believe what? We believe that Jesus Christ was birth of a virgin birth, meaning no man touched Mary. Virgin birth. He lived, walked, talked, and breathed, and did his ministry for three years, but 33 years on this earth. He was crucified, executed, killed, and rose on the third day like he said he was. If you can confess, repent, and believe, then you can be in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, this is how you become new. He is a new creature. I could really stop and close the book right there. That's the formula to being new. You're being new when you accept and understand who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. With the knowledge that you receive from that revelation, you can be new. I don't care what your past is. I mean, honestly speaking, and we say this all the time, especially a lot of preachers and bishops and pastors and apostles, they can give you the testimonies of who they was before they became, before they came into Christ. I could share testimonies of who I was before I came into Christ. Lord have mercy. You know, and people say, well, you wasn't that bad, Sean. My mind, my mind was tore up. It was the things that I was thinking about doing. And I thank God, the grace of God didn't allow me to go there, but there was things that I was thinking about doing and contemplating doing that I had to be delivered from. And when I when I got when I got in Christ, Christ guided all that energy and all them them thoughts and things. He turned them for his glory and things that he wanted me. So I said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is. This is not this is generic he, not just man, but he is a new creature. Like I was just speaking on. Old things are passed away. Now this is something that I don't understand why people confuse. Why do you confuse that old things need to be passed away if you want something new? If somebody tell you, okay, I'm going to give you this, but you have to give, in other words, your hand can only hold so much. If you want to let go of some of the things you got, God can fill it with new things. But some people hold on to the past things because they, they know what the, to expect. Now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. So often when people don't have the faith to believe what God has for them, they hold on to old things. I want to keep my old friends. I want to keep my old habits. I want to keep my old ways, but not understanding. You can't keep those old things and receive God's new things. And I'm going to share this with you because God shared this with me before I came on there when I was meditating. It's not so much that what God is going to give you is new. It's new to you. It's new to you because it hasn't been preached, it hasn't been taught, it hasn't been received. The things that God desires to give you, what's the Bible says, uh, you haven't thought of, you haven't even imagined. So you can't even ask for it. You can't even, you can't even think of the things that God desires to do for you. They're new. They're new to you, but they're not new to him because they're in his word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. I've, I've prayed for many a people, and I've even seen in the spirit where people, some people just refuse to let go. I shared with my uncle a revelation of somebody that's in our family, and it's sad because they lived over 60 years on this earth, and they'll go to church, they'll go to the altar, and it's like they have spiritually all this luggage. They'll bring all this baggage and luggage to church, and with every intention of taking it on the altar and leaving the altar. But they'll take it, and they'll bring it to church, they'll go through praise and worship, go through all the, all the rudiments of the service or whatever, Alter all comes, they take all this luggage, spirit, this is spiritual, this is not physical luggage. They take all this stuff and all these scars and all these pains and all the things that happen to them, take them up to the altar. They'll get prayer and get prayer from the preacher, then they'll pick all their stuff up and take it back. You're not supposed to take it back. Old things are passed away. You have to let some things go. You have to let it go. If you want what God has for you, and this is prophetically speaking 20, 2017 into the now, not, not something that long this is now going forward this is what god is saying right now this is rhema if you want what god has for you that's new right now you are going to have to let some old things go you can't have both and if you're willing to, to not trust god and believe god for your blessings that he has for you and to hold on to some old stuff you crazy you are crazy so therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold i love that word behold in scripture behold Behold, <laughs> all things are become new. All things, let me read 18. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given us to the ministry of re 
reconciliation. God desires to reconcile himself to human kind, human nature, and to make it personal to you. God desires that. That's what this whole thing is about. Adam and Eve fell in the garden, and ever since then, throughout Scripture, God has been reconciling himself to, to man. Man has created denomination and all these traditions of men, all these things that keep us away from God. Excuse me. I'm not going to get into it. We just finished um, observing the cult, Feast of Tabernacles at the end of the end gathering. And what God tells me and speaks to me through the volume of the book of the feast. Oh, noisy things. What God has shown me prophetically through the feast, um, some people act like that's new. That, that, that's back in Leviticus. Come on, man. The Torah, the Law and the Prophets. You know how long ago that was written? And the reason why it's new to people, because it's been rejected. God, like Hosea 4 and 6, my people destroy for lack of knowledge. It's not that knowledge wasn't available. Knowledge has been rejected. And what God is trying to tell you, and I'm not going to be long-winded, I'm almost done, is that if you want what he has for you, you got to be willing to let the old things go. You got to let it go. It's just really that simple. I, I'm not going to spend all day browbeating you about what the word says concerning your future. Your future, not my future. Because when God gave me the word, the first thing I do is repent and ask for forgiveness because I know I done, and I've been in the era of the scripture. When he reveals something to me, I got to be able to let some old things go and receive the new. I didn't even really think I was going to share a word this midweek miracle because I was busy yesterday getting some pie. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I like pie. I can't help it, y'all guys. I love pie. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so um, I was kind of tied up. And I couldn't get the Wi-Fi, so I, I waited to the day to share and God gave me this word yesterday while I was in, in, in going from A to B. And um, he just shared with me newness, 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 newness. It's time for people to let go of that old mentality, that old spirit, that old cantankerous things, those old things. It's time to let go of those old things and accept and receive the new things that God has for you. Even if it's new revelation from the word, quit acting like the word ain't, can't, can't refresh and renew you. Quit acting like that. That's the wrong attitude. Quit acting like when you go to church, wherever you worship, whenever you fellowship, that God is not going to speak to you and give you something going forward. You know, you can't go in there with that attitude like, here we go again. That's not going to work. You need to go in with the spirit of expectation. Well, if this is the day I'm going to receive my miracle, I don't care how long you've been waiting for a husband or a wife. I don't care how long you've been waiting to, 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 to have a child. I don't care how long you've been waiting to get delivered. I don't care how long you've been waiting to get healed. The woman with the issue of blood, I just spoke on that uh, a while ago, a couple weeks ago, I think, maybe, and God was just revealing to me is that she got to the, the point to where she's like, I'm not going to carry this sickness back home. It, it may, I may get killed for touching a kosher rabbi Jew before a high Sabbath, but I'm going to touch the hem of his garment because I'm sick of it. I'm done with this sickness. I want to be made new. I want to be made whole. And not only did I tell people when I just preached on that Jesus healed and delivered her from her past, present, and future. Cause that's just how he is. He didn't just deliver her uh, from her sickness, her, her 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 illness. He delivered her from her past, present, and future. Because her past was tore up. Because for the past twelve years she was sick. So he delivered her from that sickness. In her present, he delivered her from the very fact that she should have been stoned to death because she touched a kosher rabbi Jew before a high Sabbath. So she should have been stoned to death because she was unclean. And he healed her from her future. Because number one, she's going to get eternal life by believing in Jesus Christ. And number two, because he healed her and not the doctors, she ain't got to live in debt no more. She, like he said, go. Your faith has, has made you whole. Go and be free. God has some new things for you. And I'm tired of people trying to put people in the coffin before it's their time. As soon as somebody got a little cough, <coughs> oh, well, we better plan a funeral. <laughs> they ain't got that much longer to live. <laughs> or you see these dudes, you know what I'm saying? I'm 48. It is not near time for me to hang up nothing and give. I'm tired of people telling me what I need to stop doing because of my age. That's your mentality. According to the Bible, yeah, that book, the Bible, we were promised 120 years. But the problem is we don't take care of ourselves. We, we tear ourselves up. We tear our temple up and we don't exercise and we expect, oh God, no, gluttony is a sin. That's one of the seven deadly sins. You being gluttonous. You know how we do. We get them big. I'm, <laughs> we get them platters. They're not even plates anymore. We get platters and fill that thing up. <laughs> and then you wonder why you ain't operating the way you spoke. Because you're going against the, the commandments. You know what I'm saying? We got to get back to what God said. 
Yes, Ecclesiastic says there's nothing new underneath the sun. You're right, there is, it's not new. It's just been rejected and ignored. The word is the word. And it's not going to change just because people don't want to receive it. So we got to get to the place where we're hungry, hungry and thirsty after God. We need to get back to there. We need to be so hungry and thirsty after God, chasing like a deer panting for water. I saw some deer yesterday, and um, I stopped to take a picture of them, and they stopped to look at me. And we look at each other, and um, I'm like, they on a mission to go get something. And you see them dead on the side of the road because they're, they're so hungry for what they want, they're willing to risk life and limb. At some point, as a people of God, we, yeah, that's right, uh, Norvette. You know, when we played football, we played semi-pro football, and we had a passion for football that was so strong, we wasn't worried about getting hit and getting no concussion. We wasn't worried about getting our limbs broke and not being able to go to work Monday and provide for our family. We, our passion for that sport was so great, we didn't fear what could happen. And God has not given us that spirit of fear, so why is it for things in the world we can be passionate about? I mean, they got this thing they about to have here in West Virginia. I just read and I seen the paper this morning when the dude was reading the paper. It said um, something about some bridge jumping, some national bridge day, where these folks going to jump off a bridge for no reason whatsoever, but just because they done made up a day called National Bridge Day. Now, you can't celebrate the Feast of the Lord, but you can come for a day where you tie a rubber band to your butt and jump off a bridge and hope it don't snap and kill you. What kind of crazy folk? But we can't chase after God? Come on, man. Where the soldiers at? Where the people who hungry and thirsty for God? Who beating down the church? Open the church doors up so we can get in here and fellowship and worship. You know what I'm saying? And forget the time clock. Take the clocks down. We're going to praise God to the Shekinah glory fall on this place. And it's so so filled with a thick cloud that can't nobody minister. We don't need nobody to get up there and get no word. The word's going to minister to each and everybody in the cloven and fire tongues is going to be. This is the Bible. I'm not talking about nothing at the side of my neck. These are things that God has given us by way of example so that we can experience them. But we don't experience them because we don't come in with the mentality that we're going to experience these things. We go in there like, oh, here we go. Same old, same old. She going to shout. She going to speak in tongues. He going to roll on the floor. They going to do a jog around the building. We going to take offering. He going to preach. And we going to go home and eat. Y'all got it about a minute, time, an hour. And, and, and got nerve to try. That's not new. That's not what God desires for us to have. And I'm not knocking nobody's little, little worship experience or little fellowship, but if you want to experience the things of God the way God intended for us to experience them, you're going to have to allow God to make you new. That's what God. That's why I'm hearing from the Spirit of the living God in this time, in this day, in this hour, is that newness is available. It's always been. It's not because I'm saying it, but newness, because we know Jesus Christ. There's, Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. You know what that means? That means that whatever I experienced yesterday, today can be sweeter because I have more revelation and God has given me more grace and mercy to go forward in, my, in this life he's given me to live. Amen? So I had a great day yesterday, awesome day, but today can be sweeter by way of revelation. <laughs> I'm laughing because my wife is on here messing with me. But anyway, I'm about to get out of here, folks. Um, I pray that something I said would provoke y'all to get in your word and be hungry after God. Don't settle for nothing. Nothing. Do not settle for less. Get around some people that will that will push you. I remember, you know, I got a couple different families. I got my uh, skating family, who I roller skate with, gospel skate with. Obviously, I got my church family, got my biological family, I got my, my weightlifting and workout family. <laughs> in, in, in every group, in every people, a, a, a family that I do have, they will all tell you that I, I push people. You know, sometimes I push people away. But I'm not going to live this, this, this mundane life where I'm not going to experience the things that God has for me. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Jesus God, Jesus Christ, God is too great and too awesome for me to just live a status quo life. I can't, I'm not going to, we don't have a normal God, so I'm not going to live a normal life. So I thank God that um, he's given me this platform and this opportunity to share this word with you. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you don't just accept nothing. God is saying to me to say to you that you have an opportunity to experience newness. Whatever it is you may need newness in, whatever area, if you need to uh, uh, develop, redevelop, or, or reconnect with a, um, a family member and, 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 and do things the way God wants it to be done, whatever needs to be done, it's available in this time and this season where we're going into. Amen, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this platform, Facebook Live, and um, YouTube for playback. We thank you for opportunity, Father God. I take it not for granted that my lungs are working. My heart is beating, blood is running through my body, I can hear through my ears, I can see through my eyes, I can smell through my nose. 
I don't have no hair, God, but I think your Shekinah glory is all over me because I feel your anointing and your power and your presence and it's able to destroy each and every yoke. I thank you, Father God, because you've made me to be a person with no form or fashion, a person that will be a fool for you, Lord Jesus Christ, and will preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ anywhere, anyhow, any shape, any form. I can't love you without loving you, Father God. Continue to teach me your ways. Use me, lead me, guide me, and direct me in everything I should do, will, and say. And I'll be forever mindful to give your name, all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for now and forever. Hallelujah and amen. May God bless you in heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.